The war between Ukraine and Russia is heating up. Even though the harsh winter conditions are biting the rookie and novice Russian troops, the Ukrainian warriors have been at war under these conditions for eight years, and they are getting hotter every day, turning Ukraine into a hell for the invading Russian troops. There are very hot developments on the front. There have been very hot clashes on the eastern front line for the last three days. The small advances of the invading Russian troops in the direction of Bakhmut mobilized the Ukrainian armed forces. Today, Ukraine deployed U.S., British, and German-made MLRS for the defense of Bakhmut. Ukrainian artillery hit all positions of Russian troops, especially with HIMARS and Vampire multiple rocket launcher systems. As a result of the fierce fighting on the outskirts of Bakhmut, the Russians withdrew with heavy losses. In the centers of Luhansk and Donetsk, the Russian invaders received heavy blows. Russian occupation troops are making every effort to break through the defense lines of Ukraine here, and for this purpose, the Russian invaders use all weapons and military equipment, cannons, multiple launch rocket systems, tanks, and planes. Most importantly, however, the invaders failed to break through Ukraine's defenses and retreat, breach the theater, and advance. As a result of the heavy defense of Ukraine and subsequent HIMARS attacks, more than 500 Russian invaders were eliminated in just one day on the Eastern Front. Meanwhile, in the temporarily occupied city of Alchevsk in the Luhansk region, a fire broke out in the fuel depot of the Russian invaders. Also on the night of the 17th of December, explosions took place in the Russian cities of Belgorod and Kursk, as well as in the occupied Crimea. Belgorod was also attacked by the Ukrainian Air Force on the 18th of December and Ukrainian fighter jets hit logistical targets in the Russian border city with cruise missiles. On the southern front, mutual long-range artillery fire continues in Melitopol and Kherson. The Russians are on the defensive and the Ukrainian forces are in no hurry to break through the Russian lines. The Ukrainian army is much more cautious in the south and appears to be preparing infrastructure for a major offensive in Crimea. On the other hand, the Russians are reinforcing their positions in the direction of Zaporizhia. Russian troops move part of their forces from Kakova and Nova Kakova closer to the border of the Zaporizhia region. Also, the occupationists are setting up concrete structures on the streets of the town of Melitopol in the Zaporizhia region, possibly in preparation for street wars. It was expected that the war would get so hot all of a sudden. A series of explosions at military airbases in the deep of Russia last week set off alarm bells in the Kremlin. After this heavy defeat, Russia bombed Ukrainian cities with at least 76 cruise missiles on December 16. More than half of the Russian missiles were targeted in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. However, the Ukrainian air defense was not weak enough for Russia to overcome. Ukraine managed to shoot down 80% of 76 missiles in total. Kiev was targeted by 40 Russian missiles, but Ukraine was equipped with the most powerful Western air defense systems. American NASAMS, British Starstreak, German IRIS-T, and French Crotal air defense systems managed to protect the capital Kiev at full capacity. 37 of the 40 Russian cruise missiles fired at Kiev were destroyed by these powerful systems. It was definitely a new record, and Western air defense systems were 100% successful. At this point, Ukraine's need for a more powerful air defense system has been understood once again. And while the conversations behind the scenes this week surprised even Ukraine, it drove Putin crazy. Now the Ukrainian air defense had seven out of the ten most powerful air defense systems in the world. And only the American-made Patriot, THAAD, and the Israeli Iron Dome air defense systems remained. Although the Iron Dome air defense system has been requested many times to date, the Israeli administration has stated that it will not give an Iron Dome to Ukraine. The THAAD air defense system, on the other hand, never came to the fore. However, the Patriot air defense system has been on the agenda for a long time, and serious steps to send it to Ukraine this week surprised even the Ukrainians, alarming the Kremlin and causing Putin to make very harsh threats. Patriots were no longer a dream for Ukraine, and Putin knew that the most advanced Russian warplanes and pilots would no longer be able to fly over Ukrainian skies with the arrival of the Patriots. Now let's travel to the Ukrainian adventure of Patriot air defense systems. Although the Ukrainian military has repelled most of the hundreds of missiles and kamikaze drone attacks daily by Russian forces, Ukrainian forces are struggling to keep up. Two U.S. officials and a senior Biden administration official stated that the United States will supply Ukraine with air defense systems. U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to approve the aid package, which includes an advanced long-range air system, after U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin signed it. 
The U.S. stated that the advanced long-range air defense systems will be delivered to Ukraine as soon as possible, and that Ukrainian soldiers will be trained at a U.S. Army base in Grafenware, Germany. The advanced long-range air defense system in question is the Patriot surface-to-air missile system, of which the United States has several variations. Ukraine's use of the Patriot missile defense system will provide the highest level of assistance in protecting Ukraine's airspace and critical infrastructure from unmanned aerial vehicles, ballistic and cruise missiles in the long term. It is not yet clear exactly which version of the Patriot air defense systems to be supplied by the U.S. to Ukraine will be sent. Version differences in Patriot missiles vary in terms of training time and cost. U.S. Army Patriot training can take up to 20 weeks, which can be shortened when dealing with veterans, especially in air defense operations. Patriot has unique challenges as a legacy system, including different technologies and upgrades over time. The Ukrainian army may encounter different situations from what was learned in training during defense operations, with the difficulty of its defense systems. In such a case, the Ukrainian army can gain new experiences by blending what has been learned. In addition, Air Force Commander General Ryder, who has the most information about the training processes, made it clear that the USA will train 500 Ukrainian soldiers every month from January. There are major differences between the GEM-T version for tactical ballistic missiles and the GEM-C targeting cruise missiles. Besides these two versions, there is also the PAC-3 MSC version. Missile type, how long the training takes, how expensive each component is, and how it can be used will determine what type of Patriot air defense system is supplied to Ukraine," said Jordan Cohen, policy analyst at the Cato Institute, a U.S.-based think tank. Cohen underlined that the Biden government decided a long time ago which type of missile to send. While the Patriot air defense system can fire at longer ranges and is a more versatile system than the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile Systems called NASAMS, its high cost is a confusing detail. At the same time, another reason for the success of the United States with Patriot air defense systems is the number of Patriots it has. Ian Williams, member of the International Security Program of the Center for Strategic and International Studies and Deputy Director of the Missile Defense Project, drew attention to an important detail on this subject. Williams noted that the U.S.'s success with the Patriots was linked to the deployment of units as battalions with four batteries, with radar in different directions. Ukraine needs a large number of Patriot air defense systems to achieve success. If Ukraine is not provided with a sufficient amount of Patriot defense systems by the USA, there will be no radical change in Ukraine's strategic situation. The statements that the United States of America will provide the Patriot air defense system to Ukraine had great repercussions in the Kremlin Palace. The Russian Foreign Ministry made a statement stating that if the White House supplies Patriot missile systems to Ukraine, the United States must suffer the consequences. In this statement, Russia publicly threatened the United States. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman Maria Zakharova stated that the U.S. handing over an advanced long-range missile system to Ukraine would be considered a provocative move by the Kremlin. Following news that the West will provide the Patriot to Kiev, the most advanced missile ever supplied to the Ukrainian military to help the Ukrainian army repel Russian airstrikes, Zakharova noted that the United States has effectively become a party to the war in Ukraine. Russian officials stated that during the ongoing war in Ukraine, the U.S. and the West started an economic war with sanctions and increased tensions over the supply of advanced weapons to Ukraine. Pentagon spokesman Air Force Commander General Pat Ryder said that despite Russian threats, the United States will not stop sending long-range weapons to Ukraine, and that Russian threats will not cause the United States to disrupt its ongoing security assistance plans to Ukraine. As the Russians suffered heavy losses throughout the war, Western weapons were the biggest supporters of the Ukrainian forces. The senior officials of Kiev are aware of the great advantage that Ukraine has gained with the help of modern weapons, and they express at every opportunity that they expect greater assistance in clearing their lands from the abolitionist Russians. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky calls on Western countries to prepare new military aid packages whenever he gets the opportunity. Thanks for watching.